Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here. My first time in Vietnam. Thank you so much for the kind invitation by you and you wider, particularly to Channing here. And uh, I will talk uh, today about uh, uh, Brazilian case study, uh, the institutional reform of the Brazilian power sector, and uh, the implications uh, it had for transformation, inclusion, and sustainability. Actually, this uh, presentation is draws extensively from uh, previous research uh, work done in collaboration with the Overseas Development Institute from the UK. Uh, and together with uh, our British friends, uh, we examined the sustainability of Brazilian energy system as a whole. So I focus here only on electricity, and particularly uh, because as the previous speaker has already mentioned, access to affordable, reliable, and clean electricity is a key requirement of sustainable development. So uh, this uh, reform of Brazilian power sector has as its main target increasing the economic efficiency of supply through market transportation. This was done in the early 90s following the extensive debate uh, all over the world about privatization of power sectors. And was particularly inspired by the UK case. These were the times where there was also strongly uh, political uh, debate and a lot of uh, neoliberals reform uh, all, all over the globe uh, following Thatcherism and Reconomics. So um, uh, in the case of Brazil, this reform actually led to, has led to undesirable social effects and uh, also environmental, uh, uh, negative environmental impacts. And eventually also the economic sustainability was jeopardized by a power shortage. And uh, this led the following government to uh, take a reform of the reform. So I think these lessons of th that can be learned from this experience of uh, energy regulation uh, are interesting in terms of discussing how to get the right balance between state and market in the energy sector. So the reform was done between 94 and the uh, 98, the first government of the Fernando Cardoso administration in Brazil. And uh, uh, before the reform, what we get was a few state-owned companies. There was a holder, Electrobras, and it was a vertically bundled industry. That means that generation, transmission, and distribution were uh, actually, now I can't see it's even worse. Okay, thank you. All right, now maybe it's a little better for you to follow. So you have here in the left column the pre-reform situation. And um, of course there were problems with this kind of industry. Uh, there was a financial crisis. The state was not any longer able to supply, to provide the financial resource to the investment in the huge uh, hydropower plants uh, with long-term uh, construction and return on investment periods. So um, the, uh, the previous situation that allowed this state-owned system to endure and actually led to Brazil having striking high renewable share uh, um, in the overall energy and electricity generation. Uh, for, for instance, in 1990, Brazil had 90%, 90% of all electricity was generated through hydropower. And uh, this situation was made feasible by a, a mix of uh, uh, public funding and also soft loans from 
uh, international uh, agents, 60 to 40 percent. But this was not any longer uh, uh, feasible, given the size of the system and also a lot of conditionalities and constraints on the uh, soft loans from agents like the World Bank uh, because of environmental concerns in uh, building large hydropower plants. So the government also was in a, uh, the Brazilian economy as a whole after the moratory of the foreign debt and the public finances were facing a very uh, difficult period. So they needed to privatize, to sell uh, some actives. So uh, the reform was as in other uh, countries uh, led to the privatization of uh, the transmission and the distribution, the generation, they had not the time to do it. There was the vertical unbundling of the uh, industry and uh, there was a federal power regulatory uh, board that was created. And uh, they did to have a competitive generation, banning the monopolies, attracting foreign investors and private funding and we've moved from centralized planning with a, a whole uh, a list of projects to indicative planning. So uh, this uh, situation uh, actually, uh, as in other countries, uh, was following more or less the, the, the model of uh, the UK uh, reform. The problem is in Brazil with the overwhelming role by hydropower, there was actually a failure to generate incentives for the private sector to under undertake this investment in large hydropower plants, because even if electricity price would go up uh, to recover the sums spent in acquisition of the state-owned uh, utilities, uh, the problem is that uh, the risk uh, aversion of the private sector for long-term projects, uh, also the environmental uncertainty over uh, in getting environmental license, made that actually the supply capacity has not followed and we had a power crisis in uh, imposing 20% cuts on households by the end of uh, last century. So uh, in, during this period, there was also the negative uh, performance that uh, hydropower uh, share was decreased from 90% to 80%. It was done too fast, this reform, just in five years, against 15 years even in the UK. And of course, electricity price increase have put a heavy, heavier burden, financial burden, low income class where the share of the electricity expenses increased dramatically compared uh, to the uh, household income. So uh, we have some figures. In Brazil, there was already uh, good access to uh, electricity in urban areas. In before the reform, it was 68% in rural areas. It was increased, not so much, but to 74. So overall, uh, average electrification has in slowly increased from 92 to 95 percent, also a small increase of more than 10 percent in average household electricity consumption, but mo more than 80 percent of increase in the tariffs and in connection fees as well. So uh, with the political context uh, changed after two terms, two four year terms of the Cardoso administration, the Lula government for eight years, also two four years terms, uh, uh, did the reform of the previous reform. Stopped privatization, uh, of course, have no renationalization of distribution uh, which was kept private, but the generation uh, was uh, still in the hands of state-owned companies, still today. And there was the creation of a federal planning agency, EPE, as a research and planning arm of the Ministry of Energy, who actually uh, got back to normative planning, determines according to the uh, 
uh, demand prospects that the privatized utilities have to give the government, have to say how much power they um, need in the next five years, and they are bound to have contracted the uh, generation to meet that demand. And uh, the government takes care of what plants have to be built and where. So the hydropower potential of river basins can be fully explored because when in hand of the private sector, sometimes sites that could generate, say, 1,000 megawatt were just equipped with 200 megawatts and were flooding all the possibility to have the 800 megawatts, just to give you an example. So there was a kind of predatory use of natural resources by the private sector. So this uh, hydropower potential now is being tapped and uh, there was uh, a key, uh, a key uh, feature of this new planning is that the tendering is based for uh, the project already decided by the government, already with the environmental license, the environmental permit that. So the risk for the private sector is considerably lower and it is a reverse auction. That means that uh, the, the winner is the consortium that actually will build that project and uh, will uh, have the lower electricity price to the consumer. So the model privileges the modicity of the electricity prices. And um, the National Development Bank has been very key together with the state-owned power generation utilities to make it feasible a public-private partnership to fund this large hydropower plants, but also uh, uh, made possible a fast increase of wind power in Brazil. Uh, as in other places. And hydro has stabilized at 80%, which is already an achievement uh, in the last 10 years. So this actually, in overall energy consumption in Brazil, taking also the fuel, the, the heat demand, Brazil had in 1990 uh, uh, nearly half, 49% of overall en energy consumption would come from renewables, mainly hydropower, and ethanol and bagasse from sugar cane, and also renewable charcoal from eucalyptus plantations. Now, uh, from 1990 to 2000, this share of renewables dropped from 49 to 41%, partly due to lack of investment in hydropower. And from, 90, uh, from the year 2000 to 2010, after this reform of the reform, it was back from 41 uh, increased again to 45% of overall, overall energy in the country is renewable. So uh, there was also uh, in, uh, improvement in the social uh, impacts because of stronger role of the Federal Regulatory Board in uh, requiring specified number of new electricity connections. So universal access to every household in the country is targeted for next year, 2015, and the program to do that was replayed from the replaced from the previous light for uh, light in the countryside. The name of the previous program to extending uh, electricity access to this light for all, and a, a brief comparison of the two programs uh, uh, shows how the new program has channel. Uh, more uh, resources, significant more resources, near 0.37% uh, of the GDP against 0.25% and connected 2. million households. So now the access of rural households that was increased from 68 to 74% in the previous program now has reached 90%. So. Uh, electricity access in Brazil next year uh, may be very close to 100% to all the households. So uh, finally, the lessons learned and policy recommendations that we can draw from this case is mainly the danger of automatically translating uh, 
translating international regulatory trends for managing public utilities to a national context. We have to uh, address domestic circumstances and specificities. For in the case of Brazil, the natural resource endowment in hydro power resources, for instance. And of course, we have to manage concerns about extension of electricity assets and affordability, which is a key part of uh, access, of course. And uh, the adaptive policy learning and uh, the change, the reform of the reform is also an interesting aspect. So uh, there was a kind of back and forth. So actually um, didn't go back to the previous situation, but it's more like a compromise in the middle way with greater uh, state-led planning, but a mixed uh, economy of provision and particularly uh, much more room for uh, the private investment in generation, which is absolutely key for the uh, expansion of the system. Uh, so I think uh, that is also important to, to check the uh, impacts on the environment, particularly the share of renewables, and uh, also the social impacts as uh, electric access. So this kind of report must take these concerns aboard and actually provide a specific programs targets to uh, take care of the possible uh, uh, negative impacts on low-income classes. Thank you.